Giles thing. The feds apparently are pulling way back, according to the Seco Sunday, on pollution control grants. Oh, oh yeah. We're on. Good evening. Oops. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good all evening. Right. Welcome to the September 30th, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. We're going to start with, we're tonight working on the 2016 budget reviews and we're going to go a little bit out of order tonight and we're going to start with the conservation. Mr. Diener. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. <coughs> there it is, 53. 53. 53. Let's see if I can get to There we you've had a chance to look through our budget um, I think we've all reviewed it okay uh, then um, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any okay do you have anything to offer before we start there are only two differences in the budget this year versus the previous year uh, one is we are proposing a one and a half percent increase in the conservation coordinator salary for 2016 um, with the new budget mm -hmm. and the other proposed increase is a um, for our recording secretary uh, who is at ten dollars per hour where she's been since I think at least 2002 that position has been at ten dollars an hour and so we're proposing to increase that to eleven dollars an hour okay those are the only changes everything else is as it has been in previous years okay questions mr bridal no uh no land acquisitions anything this year that we could foresee coming or? uh we have nothing we have a couple of things that are in discussion but they've got a ways to go there's nothing imminent okay okay that's all i got thank you pretty small budget okay and mrs wolseley yeah, Jay, just clarify for me, because I think this is misleading a little bit. You've got um, part-time wages includes a salary increase of 1.5%. Is that the increase that we just did? No, that is the proposed said, increase for next year. Okay, but you said you've got 2015 here. Do you? Wait a minute. Okay, so this is, I thought I saw 2015. So this is the 2016 budget. Right. Right. Period. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bean? No, Mr. Chairman. I have no questions. And Mr. Waddell? No. Did you want to uh, join us at the table? <laughs> Good evening, Ray Ann. Good evening. Sorry. Okay. So no one has any further questions or? No, I think uh, they have a good budget this year, and as all the departments have done a great job at trying to come in pretty level funded. And uh, we know that's important, and we've tried over the years to maintain our budget as as evenly as we can. And most of the line items, um, we've tried to keep them under control and keep them as as steady as we possibly can. So our budget tends to be pretty boring from that perspective. <laughs> but I kind of think people like that kind of boring. Now, how much money have you got in uh, acquisition um, funds that you're working with? I believe that is, I don't remember the exact number, I think it's about um, $75,000, something in that range. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, 
part of that has been allocated to the ice pond dam reconstruction project. Mm -hmm. um, we will be having a warrant article this year, separate, of course, from the budget, where we're looking for an increase or um, uh, an allocation to our uh, land conservation fund um, because we do think it's a value as we have in previous years to build up that fund gradually so that when we do have an opportunity to acquire some land or to purchase a conservation easement that we can minimize the hit um, to to the town overall by having most of those funds come out of our budget mm -hmm. well we appreciate all that both of you do and thank you for coming in tonight it's a pleasure tough me yeah, sorry <laughs> that it was so fast <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, next, we're, there's someone from the cemetery here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even this see one. you. You're Danny's hiding in the back. Hiding. Yeah. How you doing, Danny? Good, Rick. 11. 11. Fine, thanks. 11. Well, I've always looked forward to this presentation. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for taking me early this year. 27 years of, uh, I think. Hey. Thank you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What page is that? On? Eleven. Eleven. So you can open up if you'd like. Um, well, really, um, I'm still, as, as you've probably been to have seen, I'm still trying to figure out these damn utilities. Uh, the electric I knew was going to jump at, to some degree after the renovations, but it's... Uh, been a heck of a lot more than I thought, which is why we're over that this year. Um, however, what we have spent on electric, we've saved on gas because the building is so well insul insulated now. Mm -hmm. So it evens itself out. Uh, other than that, uh, I think the only thing I put in, I did put a thousand dollar raise in uh, for my crew, my part time workers. Uh, I think they all deserve at least a 50 mm -hmm. cent or so raise. They, uh, they're amazing people, you know, and I, I couldn't do it without them. Other than that. Okay, well, we'll open it to questions. Okay. Mr. Waddell. Nothing right now, I might. Thank you. And Mr. Bridal. Um, <clears throat> no, I think, uh, again, the uh, cemeteries have come up pretty good this year. Um, I, I'm always amazed at the work they get done with the limited funds and, and the limited help you have with the, your part-time help mm -hmm. and I and I can understand the electric bill even everybody's own home electric bill with yeah the, with the price of electricity this past year it's gone. Um, the, the jump in that uh, it's it's hard for departments to try to plan uh, and with default budgets you have last year's money I know my home home electric bill uh, is a hundred dollars more this month than it was for the same month last yeah. year, mm -hmm. so yeah. for about the same amount of usage, so uh, I can understand that. So keep up the good work. Thank you, Rusty. Mrs. Wolseley, how's the truck working out, Danny? The new it's truck I love. Relief to yeah, have. The, 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 um, it's exactly, uh, I, and I got to thank Maddie Shar. He got me exactly what I wanted this yeah, time. Yeah, good, and, big and help. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And my only other question for you is, how about the trees? Do you have anticipate having to take any more trees down? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just, me and uh, uh, Whoever. Mr. Hopkins and myself just crossed paths today. I have a dead oak sitting out there right now. Um, we're gonna have to work something out on that. Okay. Can't, I can't really afford to have the whole tree. Well, we're gonna work something out. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous. Because I know that's it's, a concern. Uh, yeah, that that's an, yeah. In the okay. pines, you know, the pines. You never know what they're gonna do. Right. I, I had to. That was uh, someone. You know, I had a question regarding contract labor. That's where it went. We had three pines fall this year. <laughs> yeah. One at Ring Swamp and two at High Street. So. Um, I am planting uh, some new hardwoods tomorrow, which I'm Good. excited about, thanks to uh, Mrs. McCool, who uh, you know, has a son interned in the cemetery. She's donating them to us, and I want to thank her for that. And, That's uh, very nice. Well, we thank you for what you do. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mary Louise. Tell the trees to behave. 
Mr. Bean. Candy, good luck with the dead oak, and I have no questions, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so. A anything else, um, Mr. Waddell? You already? No, no. I'm set. No. I wanted to give you two chances. Thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we appreciate everything that you do. You're doing a great job over there, and it's nice to hear that you get to work with people like the woman that you just mentioned. And I'm sure it's you give make it special when things like that happen. So thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay. And welfare would be next. Next, we're going to move on to welfare. Page 48. Page 48. Michelle is here. Oh, there she is. How are, you, how are you this evening? Fine, thank you. And you? Fine, thanks. Good. Do you want to open it up for us? Um, we're seeing fewer people. I'm still seeing a fair number of single adults. Oh. Um, the use of the pantry has dropped off considerably, but I think that the um, St. Vincent de Paul is doing a, um, pulling, more than pulling their weight in the community with a huge um, pantry, including a meat locker. So they've really uh, stepped up. Um, my overall clients are down from usually 60 or, 60 or 80 a year. I'm probably down to 20 or 30 a year. Mm -hmm. So it's down considerably. Now, do you work with the um, at all with what happens with the soup kitchen that's down the beach? I volunteer as part of the a medical social worker for the free clinic that's mm -hmm. housed in the same place. Okay. Um, I make sure that people know about that mm -hmm. know about that um, soup kitchen. I heard that they've did eleven thousand yeah. dinners this past year. The, wow. uh, I'm not. I'm yes. not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And there's also a new pantry, or a new um, meal being served once a week on Thursday, just to families at the Methodist Church, and you have to have minor children in order to go to it. Yeah. So they're serving a family-style dinner, and I guess that that gets rave reviews. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And I heard it, what you just said about St. Vincent de Paul has really done a lot. They're amazing. They're amazing. The churches in this community are all amazing. They all take a little piece of it and uh, really, really step up to the plate. Well, that's great. Yeah. Mr. Bridal? No, I think for the total budget for welfare, $51,000 $51, yeah. um, for the services that the people get in this town could always be more money. Uh, yeah. But I think for what you do, um, what, as you said, the churches do. Yeah. Um, I know I was talking with uh, uh, Dr. Jay Kaminsky the other day yeah. Um, yeah. over the, uh, the clinic down there, and he says yeah. the numbers are down at the clinic, which is, is good, but we, you know, at $51,000, we're not spending a lot of money on, yeah. on your department, and I think that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm glad to hear that your client list is down. I think people are getting what they need. They're not getting what they want. Correct. They're getting what they're getting. They're getting shelter. They're not getting a week at a motel room. Right. You know, but they are getting sheltered. And I know, I know the Methodist Church. Their, their program that you, you just mentioned with the uh, the Thursday night uh, yep. dinners. Family uh, dinners. They, they have. Uh, they're getting quite a good response. Yes, to that. Mm -hmm. it's very well received. And we have school social workers who've really stepped up and really take care of their families. Yeah. Uh, they, they do a fabul fabulous job come May to make sure that the families are situated for the summer. Very rarely will I see a family across the, during the summer because, of, because they've planned with that social worker to care for themselves. They've done a really good job. Well, you've, you've done an excellent job uh, kind of spearheading or, or guiding people through a, a lot of things, and, and like I said, uh, with with Task and a couple of the other groups that I work with, I, I know the, the stuff that you do, and uh, uh, it's it's the quiet behind the so scene things. They do you little do things, the, yeah, for the people in this town that, and, that I really appreciate. And Sprague Sprague Energy in Portsmouth stepped up this past year and gave us money to our, for our pantry, so I was able to buy things like crackers and things that I don't get from USDA, and that was as a result of their their donation, their gift. Excellent. Well, thank you so. for all the work you do. Thank you. 
Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. You do so much with referrals, so you're not trying to do everything in, in one department, and uh, you've been very creative and ingenious over the years, oh. sorting out who can get what where. So you do a great job, and I have no problem with your budget. Thank you. I'm Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and Michelle, I know that uh, the Human Service Agency's uh, warrant that goes in every year, that is uh, 173000 I know that leverages and uh, helps to be a force multiplier to keep your budget down. But I know you, and not all of that, but some of that does, and uh, you run a great ship. Thank you. You do a great job, and we're very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Waddell. Yeah, thank you for what you do. Uh, I just find it amazing that it that it's the, the, the clients have decreased so much mm. and stuff. That's, is there, did, did, can you attribute that to anything, or? Well, I think that the Affordable Care Act is taking was the reason why I could reduce the uh, the med the medical budget and the decrease in gas prices. The reason I, uh -huh. well, I was I, I'm going to give it a shot to see if we don't go over on the gas fares. Um, if gas goes back up, then we'll have to readjust it. But uh, I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to stay down. Okay. And right, right. I think the Affordable Care Act had an awful lot to do with the medic, the medical line, confidence of letting the medical line go, and also the free, the free medical clinic. They take care of what they, what they prescribe, they pay for. They don't, they're not coming to the town the next morning to ask us to buy an antibiotic. It's mm -hmm. being paid for. Wow. So. Very good. Thank you. Very good. good. People. Thank you for coming in tonight. We really mm -hmm. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Next, we have the Building Department and the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Our buildings on page 33. ZBA is on page 10. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you tonight? Very good, thank you. That's good. What, um, which one are we doing first? I guess the building's the bigger one. Okay. Yeah, pretty much what you have before you is a uh, proposed budget for 2016 of $218,019, which is basically a level budget, um, same same as I'm uh, operating under this year, with a small exception of there was a small increase, and that was under wages and salaries, which were either contractual, union, or through merit raises by this board. Other than that... There are no changes, and it seems to be working fine. We seem to be operating right on target, and there ain't a whole much lot more to say about that, other than everything seems to be pretty regular and <coughs> steady as she goes. <laughs> See if we have any questions, Mr. Wardell. Thank you. Uh, and you're pretty confident with the budget that you're putting forward here? Yeah, I am. I'm, I feel very good with it. Um, in fact, with the target, I think we're a little bit under the target, and we've been being a little conservative. We're trying to be conservative, as um, the town manager has asked, I think, all the departments this year, especially to try to, you know, just tighten things up, and that due to the winter we had last year and that, you know, so it's everybody's kind of paying close attention to their budget, you know, working together to kind of keep an eye on each other. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. Yeah, noticing a little bit of building going on in this town over the years. Uh, a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and more to come. Some are bigger than uh, a 10 by 10 sheds that I've seen around town. That is uh, correct, how, sir. How, how is that affecting your workload? Uh, we're busy. We're very busy. Um, but we have a great system, and we've got some great people in that office. So. Um, over time, the contractors, a lot of them are just are very familiar with the town and the system. So the scheduling in that, we've got a great way to do that uh, with the contractors, and they know how much leeway they got to give us in, in that to get the inspections done. So we've been keeping up with it, and, um, you know, some days are a heck of a lot busier than others, but, we, you know, we've been staying on top of it. The permits are... Some of the bigger permits are taking a little bit longer, but there's just so much material and information that you have to compile to review that. And, and we tell them right up front, you know, it's going to be, it could be as long as two weeks or maybe even more to, to turn around a permit. 
Um, you get these projects like on N Street and 128 Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard and you know 581 Aconit Road. And right now I'm working on 377 Ocean Boulevard. You know these are very large projects, mm. several buildings, and so there's a lot of information I need to compile, review, talk to the architects, talk to the engineers, make sure everything's the way it should be. Make sure all the conditional approvals, either by zoning board or planning board, have been met. So it takes a little time for me to compile all that and make sure it's all on record and we have all that. Are we looking in the future of any possible increase in, in uh, manpower or hours? Or I, at, at this time right now, I haven't thought of that. Um, we, we seem to have been able to deal with what we got, okay. um, with whom we have. Um, I am looking at maybe um, making uh, some changes as far as the uh, secretarial position um, because some of the things that we're doing now that we haven't done in past years is a little more complicated and we've added a part-time secretary as well and we're trying to become more um, state-of-the-art, shall we say, by scanning all our files and everything's on computer so it's accessible by all the other departments, assessing and everything, it's right there, the click of a mouse. Um, all the information on all the permits that are out there and the values and plans and everything are all being scanned into the uh, system. So, you know, we've added a lot of features to the building department that weren't there but mm. it's it's all progress which is all good stuff well it's good because I think when somebody comes in for a permit um, it, ultimately the the best thing we can do is have a, a one-stop shopping type of thing I agree uh, and make it a lot less you know cumbersome at some point I know whether it's a permit from from you and then one from the fire department and then they go to the building if they can if we get if we could have it so that and it sounds like you're doing that working towards that which right is, which is very good. It's something that we've needed for a long time in town. Yeah, and I got to tell you that working with the fire department and fire prevention and that, um, we've, we've come a long way there, and, and it's, it's great. It's a, it's a great team effort. I can tell you that right now, and uh, we've got some great guys over there as well. So um, that makes out in the field things go so much smoother and better. And, and things are done right and they're done to code, and they're safe, and, and you couldn't ask for any more than that. And when the two departments are communicating the way we have been, especially, um, you know, the last year or so, it, it, it's, a, it's a great thing. I'm sure it makes it a lot easier Absolutely. Uh, for you guys. Absolutely. So, well, thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. How long have you been heading up this department? <clears throat> Going into my 16th year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do a great job, and don't hear of any, all the years I've been watching, I haven't heard of one complaint, so you do a great job. Mrs. Wilson. The other half of your budget is what you take in in permit fees. Off the top of your head, because I don't have figures, roughly how much have you taken in so far this year? Uh, that I can tell you. That it helps to offset the expense of running your department. Absolutely. Yes. Um, as of the end of August, uh, we have collected a little over $198,000 in permit fees, and we have issued permits for a total value of construction out in the field right now of just about $28 million. So there's about $28 million in value of work going on out there. And that yeah. adds to the tax base because we'll get Most more certainly does. taxes Absolutely. collected on the new bill. You know, and, and you know, mm -hmm. last year total, we <laughs> last year for the entire year, we issued um, permits for value of construction of thirty-seven million, thirty-seven and a half million. Yeah. And I'm at almost twenty-eight million now, and this is August. So I still got a whole quarter to go. So we're probably going to be looking at bigger numbers than that. Good. And certainly, um, you know, 
definitely in the high twos, I would think, with permit fees. I, I know just the permit fees that I pushed out in, uh, in September here, you know, we're well over 200000 now. Good. And uh, like I said, I got the one on 377 Ocean Boulevard coming up, and that's multi-million dollars. Yeah. Just in permit, you know, in value of construction, so. Yeah. Got Thank some, you, Kevin. Mr. B. Well, Mr. Schultz, you do a great job. Thanks for your leadership. Thanks for running a tight ship. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. And Mr. Waddell, are we starting with you? No, we're Party doing. with me. You're getting well, old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have cue cards for you. We need page 11. Thank you for coming in tonight. Uh, he still 11. has a zoning oh, board. That's page right. 10. Page yep. 10. Zoning board. Um, there. 10, 11, whatever. I think you have a yep. copy of the zoning boards. I know. I think I do. <laughs> Planning and zoning. We just do zoning right at the bottom of 10 over to 11. The zoning, yeah. But yeah. zoning, there's there's no changes in the zoning. Um, and they're 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 right on. They're they're pretty much uh, below t target. They they're right on. So as it's well. fifty five thousand three hundred and ten. Mm -hmm. um, five thousand three hundred and ten dollars is the yep is the proposed budget, which I believe was the same as last year. I'll start with you again, Mr. Waddell, Thank you. so I don't forget. No problem. <laughs> this Got is it. a tough one. Yeah, yeah. The, the only question I have is, is looking in here, and we, we heard it from one of the previous oh. departments on the, uh, <coughs> the part-time secretarial wage. Is, is it, was there an increase in, your in, in that this year? Do you know? I haven't. I don't believe it, there was. Uh, Mrs. Rice does that. Okay. Um, I just think if, if we're going to do... We should do them across the board so that mm -hmm. they're all they're all equal. And I just okay, you know, um, I'm not sure exactly what what. Um, that's up to the zoning board. Right. That's it, it is up to the board. I can ask the chairman to definitely look into that. Yeah. And to make sure that she's getting equal compensation as she should be. Throughout. Uh, everybody Correct. else's. Yeah. I take it is that more or less a. Um, is that for the people that take the minutes? Are they pretty much all yeah. the same? Uh, it varies from the board. I think it varies, actually. It oh, varies they do vary? Right. Yeah, yeah, I would assume okay. so. That's the discretion of the zoning board. Okay. All right, well, I can, uh, I can, I can mention to the uh, chairman that I just didn't know if, they, you know if they. Nothing so. to do with that. Okay, Mrs. Right. Wolseley. Yeah, two, Kevin. Revenue again for zoning. Do you have a rough feel? Because they do <laughs> charge. For services as well if you can't if you don't have it off I, the I don't top, have that but, but there is revenue derived from the activities on the zoning board yeah oh yes absolutely every application has a fee attached to it as well as they have to pay for all their own abutters notices and certified mailings and things right. like that now there is a legal expense line in here that has zero in it I'm yeah. just uh, that was taken out many years ago. Uh, well, it's been the line has been re-added, so that's something that the uh, the zoning board might want to consider in case they think they need anything. Put a dollar in there or something. I don't. Uh, whatever they choose to do, that's a, a no problem with their budget. Mr. Bean, no questions, sir. Thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. The legal department, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and that's page uh -huh. eight. eight. So, page eight for the legal department, Mr. Gerald. Good Thank evening, you. Mark. Good evening. Now, the budget you're looking at here represents a decrease of 4.33% over the uh, budget that uh, we were working against this year, the default budget. The uh, bottom line figure recommended uh, is $198,875, and in looking back, this figure is the lowest it has been since 2004. Mm. And uh, in terms of the structure of the department, of course, we are now, uh, myself and the uh, part-time administrative assistant, uh, Ann Marchand, and uh, Anne has done a fabulous job of working through uh, our uh, clerical issues and others. Um, our 
storage facility, which is bursting, has been thoroughly <laughs> organized. And uh, I can see my desk a lot of days, <laughs> thanks to Ann. And uh, has enabled me to work a lot more efficiently, efficiently with her help. Um, two, two other components that are worthy of mention, of course, is that now the um, Human Resources, Head of Human Resources is the Assistant Town Manager. And I believe that through uh, his work, uh, the outside labor costs, not the collective bargaining, but the outside labor costs has uh, dramatically, uh, for outside counsel, uh, decreased due to his on-site involvement. I think that's an inherent uh, aspect of an inside capability. And thus you see that the while there was budgeting for $20,000 for this year under the default budget, only $293 of that has been spent so far. And thus, in terms of changes from last year's budget to this year's, you'll see, I believe, due to his presence, we've been able to uh, recommend a decrease of that from $20,000 to $10,000. Uh, that it, it keeps a capability in there if necessary for consulting outside Labor Council, but uh, that's uh, quite a far cry from what we've had in many years past. Uh, the other item that is decreased uh, dramatically is collective bargaining costs. Uh, that was budgeted using the default budget figure of $35,000, and uh, so far this year uh, we have spent zero. Again, that is due to in-house in capability in terms of that negotiating function. And I, uh, I foresee that that hopefully will be able to be continued because I think it's a lot more efficient and a lot less learning curve. And so uh, recommending a decrease in that line from $35,000 to $10,000. Again, leaving a contingency in there, but nevertheless recognizing the um, what inside capability can give you. Uh, in terms of uh, outside council fees, there are some uh, specialty projects that I believe and foresee will, will cause us to need more than the uh, $25,000 that's budgeted. I uh, can't get into specifics, but that I, I'm recommending a 20, 50000 as a contingency for that. Um, nevertheless, with those three basic changes, uh, we're still uh, below last year's budget. I have given the board a, um, a list of our pending litigation matters, which at this point, number six, 16, whereas this last year, as, as of this same time, was 29. So we've, we've uh, handled a lot of matters in, a, in that amount of time. Um, there are some... Uh, possibilities for future litigation to be aware of whenever you go through a, a town-wide revaluation uh, adjustments are made and that often leads to more tax abatement matters being filed. Uh, I do want to make one other comment which is that one of the uh, functions that uh, the former assistant town attorney did a lot of was contract review and uh, a review of invitations to bid and this board through its uh, budget efforts last year uh, assisted in, in taking up that with uh, having more hours for uh, Christina Ostman to work on assistant, uh, our administrative assistant, and she's done a great job in terms of uh, doing a, a lot of the initial review with that so that my, the necessity for my time on that has been uh, greatly reduced. She does a great job and pays a lot of attention to the uh, fine details, which is important. Thank you. Mr. Waddell? Thank you. Yeah, Mark, thanks for what you're doing. It, it, you know, <coughs> your office runs very smoothly and has done very well. And I know both you and Ed working together have done really well in negotiating with uh, certain abatements and things like that that we need to do, which is really good. Um, overall, and I, and I guess it's hard to, I'm not putting you on the spot, but I mean, there was a reorganization last year with your department and there was some controversy over it and stuff. But overall, I mean, do you feel comfortable with what went on and how we're up? I mean, you've kind of given us a little feeling to that, what's going on and how it's operating. Yes, I do. I think it's worked very well in all respects. 
Okay, good. And I had one question on staff development. You've reduced that by 50%. Are you well developed? <laughs> well, uh, members of the bar are required to take uh, at least 12 hours of continuing legal education uh, every year. And the $1,500 represented uh, two attorneys worth of that. And that's why it's down to half of that. Okay. All right. Good. Good. If you're comfortable, I, I think it's I think it's great, and I think it's it's super that you're coming in less than, and I think it shows that 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 reorganization works somewhat. Work. Yes. Mr. Bridle. No. I have nothing. He's doing an excellent job. Thank you. Mrs. Wesley. Yeah, taking a different tack on the labor negotiations, I think, has certainly been a very positive turn. Um, just on the outside council, I just kind of hold my breath for, and kind of kind of utilities sometimes, but other than that, that uh, certainly looks good, Mark. Thank you. And Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark, you transitioned uh, beautifully with the sudden loss of Wanda. You integrated with the new billet with the assistant town manager, dual hiding in the department. Uh, you've uh, transitioned remarkably. You're always on top of your game. You, you do excellent, excellent work, and thank you very much for it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. All right, now, are you finished for tonight? I am. Thank you so much. Have a nice <laughs> ride home. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and next we have the library and Amanda. Page 51. How are you this evening? Well, I'm doing okay, but I lost my tonsils last week, so I sound a little bit odd. Oh. Because oh. so she wasn't able to catch that there was a mistake, oh. so it's been corrected here. Did you eat a lot of ice cream? I did not. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> Those things, they say, you know, you can eat as much as you want, but they don't tell you you're not going to want any. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I hope it went well. I'd opt for the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you can open up for us, uh, Amanda. Great. Um, my goal for the budget this year was to bring in a, um, a, a no e increase budget. We had, I knew coming into this year that we had a larger amount allotted for health insurance than we were going to need, it just based on what, what you predict and then what you actually need. And so my hope was to use whatever was there, whatever amount over, to augment the budget in any way that I needed for 2016 without asking for any additional dollars. Um, with the exception of, I think that I must have miscalculated retirement, which the women in finance caught for me. So my plan was zero dollars, but it is three hundred twenty-three dollars more than this year because of that mistake. Um, I can give you the rough strokes of where the changes are if you'd like to know. Um, as I said, that health insurance line was the spot where we had more budgeted this year than we needed. From that amount, we are hoping to um, create a merit pool for raises in the future. We have done away with our STEP program. We used to have a salary program that advanced year by year. Um, steps were two and a half percent. So this year, um, for, for 2016, the trustees would like to create a merit pool. Um, the amount that's in there now would work out to about two and a quarter percent increase if it was applied equally across all positions. That's 20 employees in my library. Um, and the, everything else is much smaller. Um, we're hoping to add a few hours to the front desk, continuing that effort um, I mentioned last year of getting um, double coverage during most of the day. There's also um, a line called sick leave vacation. We've cut that in the past, just you know, chipping away at it, hoping that we can balance a budget. We cut too far, and we really are suffering from that. We're needing to you know, cover desks with, um, we have substitutes, and we just haven't had enough money for that lately, so we would like to increase that a little bit. And then within the area that I call the operating budget, I think, I'm trying to put it labeled on your budget, the appropriation, I think. Um, we've done some shifts internally. The periodicals, reference books, and online subscriptions have both decreased about 2,000 each. We're not cutting magazines or reference books or subscriptions. We were able to negotiate with vendors or find a different way to meet those needs of the patrons. Oh, yeah. A lot of that money is going in, so... Um, reference books that, you know, a giant tome that sits on a shelf and only one person uses at a time is now going into the nonfiction collection. So a lot less come and consult it at the library and a lot more borrow it from the library kind of book. So it's really just a shift. It's not a major difference. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the overall change is $323, but I'd be happy to answer questions. Mr. Bridal. Do you see it as, as we move forward, 
do you see a change in going to the um, the books online and stuff? I mean, that's a, a, as we move forward. Um, and how are you addressing that in, in your building? So, uh, just start with the idea: the the <clears throat> entire state of New Hampshire is a part of a consortia that um, is run through a company called Overdrive, and so we all provide both audiobooks and ebooks through a downloadable service. And we pay a small contribution, really, when you consider the amount of books and that can be borrowed. Um, so you've got patrons now in Hampton who maybe don't come through our doors, but that use our service. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the building is concerned, when I think about how it may grow or how it may change, I know I'm not adding any new stacks. I'm not going to be adding more books in the future. Though, honestly, <laughs> we're see still seeing really healthy circulation, and that's countrywide. People aren't seeing this mad um, fleeing of books of, and back and into the e-service. It's still pretty decent um, circulation. We've got a collection of, and I'm going to use round numbers, um, 70,000 physical objects. They circulate 100,000 times a year. So everything is, you know, and that's in a perfect world. Everything's going out at least once, and some things are going out twice, <laughs> right? And that's not the truth, but but, but for right. number-wise, it right. looks like it. So. Um, Continuing to look at our membership with, with this online group, Overdrive, making sure that we're providing people with a service that they can get to online. Um, I think the future for that is trying to figure out, it's an interesting thing where we're licensing those items rather than owning those items. And so every library is trying to figure out that dance because, you know, um, Hachette can change their license and then suddenly we don't have those books anymore, things like that. And so there is still that desire to have a physical copy of the book for when the license has changed, which has happened several times. Um, but just in my thinking going forward for the building is just knowing that we're looking at community space, gathering space, and, and probably not looking at book space in the future. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Walsley. You're at the mercy of technology. You're still saving? You're still comfortable with what you're saving on electricity? Yes. Yep. That's... Um, our ten-year bond, yeah. <laughs> our ten-year bond is still um, comfortably being paid with the savings that we that we net from having the energy efficient equipment. The, you know, I plot it all out. It, we had a nice dip right in 2012 when we did it, and we are starting to creep back up, but we are still well below where we were spending Good. three, four years ago. Yeah, that worked out beautifully for you guys. It's a really nice program. Nice Ready budget, program. Amanda. I have no problem with it. Okay. Mr. Bain. No questions on your budget. You uh, provide amazing leadership for an amazing uh, operation over there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Uh, no questions on the budget. Um, I, I'm always amazed when I go by the library that it's always crowded. Yeah. It's always oh, yeah. cards, which yeah. I think is phenomenal. I think that's great. No question. <coughs> periodicals. Are people mm -hmm. doing more periodicals online or are people still coming in? It's a mix. And actually, the, the service I was mentioning just recently added periodicals to it. So we do have. Um, downloadable magazines now as well. Um, magazines are interesting. We have a lot of folks who come and they browse it when they're in the building. And then the other thing that I've seen, uh, you know, we have like Home Beautiful or, or, or things like that. People come and take six months worth because they want to like plan out a new room in their house. Um, and there's some folks, really for them, their reading for the week is going to be a couple of magazines. They're not going to sit through a whole book. So we do still have people coming and taking a few out. Interesting. Well, thank you. You, you do a great job. Thank you. Absolutely. I know that um, you certainly use, uh, people love to go there and read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. The Hampton Union is a hot item there. I don't know, how, <laughs> Ma Max, I don't know how you're going to work in the future. Everyone's <laughs> going and getting the, your news for free. But I wait my turn when I go. And uh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. It's always nice to go in there. You always feel great when you leave. Oh, good. Thank you. Well, the renovations it. are nice too, Amanda. That Thank worked you. very well. Glad that you think so. Have a nice evening on your way home tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Moving on to the Mosquito Control Commission. Page 47. And 47. Good evening, Ann. Good evening. Want to open up for us? Yes. Uh, the first thing we have to look at is a request for a waiver from the bid process uh, on the town purchasing procedure. 
and that is because we only received one bid this year in response to the three requests for proposals that were emailed um, and the one that we got is from the contractor who has been doing our work for the past several years so that being said I guess I need a permission to go forward with that from I'll the board a, I'll make a motion to go forward is there a second? Do you want to state what the motion is? I just want to, to uh, waive the purchase requirements. Purchase oh, the requirement. Yes. The, the bid. Section 718-4B. Yes. Subsections 1 and 2. Oh, good. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. All Hello, those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bridal. Now we can address the money. <laughs> now we can address the money. Um, well, obviously, your budget's basically a, yeah. a one-line item, uh, right. and that's some mosquito, uh, mm -hmm. mosquito control. You know, I've seen those guys out all, all summer long, um, during the dusk. Oh yes. When they're, they're out, yeah. I've also seen them during the day, checking some of the pools on the marsh. And, uh, you know, if we can't get other people to bid, we can't get other people to bid, and I think. Uh, these guys have proven time and time again that of their worth. Yeah. Uh, well, there are only two municipal services in the area okay. in we're close by. And uh, the third person who was contacted to place a bid was someone who used to work for Mosquito Control years ago while he was going to UNH and now has his own business, but he doesn't do municipal. municipal. Mm. But uh, so, we did send him up. Um, no, I think uh, you do a great job of overseeing that part of it. Um, it seemed like we didn't have much of a, a problem this year with the West Nile as we have in the past. No, there have been some cases of, of uh, where West Nile was found in mosquito pools, but not right around here. Right. Let's see. We knock on wood. Yes. <laughs> so uh, continue to keep doing the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Wellesley. Anne has influence with the weatherman. And so it was a dry summer, which discouraged the mosquitoes, and that's why it rained today, because we're all done with mosquito season. Well, not, not quite. Well, frost. close. <laughs> because yes. we won't be bothered with the salt marsh mosquitoes because there isn't enough daylight for them. Right. But container mosquitoes can still be out there, so Miss oh. um, well, McGregor frost. warned us to remind people to empty your flower pot yeah. saucers, empty your bird bus, empty any tarps and so on that might contain this rain because yeah. it only takes five days for them to hatch. So. But you did do a great job. It was quite a nice summer free of a lot of the mosquito population. Yes. Mr. Bean. No questions. Thank you. You're welcome. And Mr. Waddell. Uh, great job, Ann. And I was not bothered, bitten by any mosquitoes this summer, so I mean, <laughs> you must be doing really well. So I thank you for that. And greenhead flies, uh, we don't see a lot of, so. Right. One thing I want to point out to you, I don't know what you are looking at, but if you look at the line under contracted services, 2015 budget, you'll see $106,000 mm -hmm. there. Um, we were working with a budget of 103. <laughs> And the, the difference was that we had requested another $3,000, which the Budget Committee had approved last year. Mm -hmm. And with the default budget, I thought that that had, the extra 3000 had disappeared. Well, evidently it was put into contractual services, which flows into the default budget. Right. So you'll be getting that money back because we didn't touch it. The other thing is the contract, the proposal that came in this year, into that we added, um, and it's a three-year proposal, the construction of 25 greenhead fly traps every year. And even with that addition, the contractor was able to come back with an increase to her proposal of only $250 because she reduced a couple of other areas, plus for her the price of fuel you know, going down, mm -hmm. that is a big
big item in their budget. So they have made some, made up some money this year, and she passed the savings on to us. Thank you. We appreciate all that you do. You've had a long history here. We appreciate it. <laughs> Don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. <laughs> Moving on to the assessing department. Page five. Page five. Good evening, Ed. Um, proposed budget for the assessing department um, has increased 14.6%. Um, the majority of that, uh, that actually relates to uh, $41,324. Uh, the majority of that, $40,000, has been um, added to line, uh, the contract services line, and that is a result of the uh, increased um, spending in that line item this year as a result of multiple appeals being scheduled in a single year requiring us to do multiple expert reports and pay for expert witnesses. Um, typically, with multiple appeals, we're not sure, we, 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 not, we don't know when the appeals are going to get scheduled. Uh, some years we may not use much of the budget as we have in the past. We've had years where we've used maybe 50% of that 60,000. However, uh, the 100,000 would be more appropriate based on uh, you know, the, the very varying uh, years where we're not sure how many appeals are going to come forward, as well as the fact that we're completing the 2016 revaluation, which typically, hopefully it does not, but typically could result in the first year in a, uh, more abatements. And typically, you, we saw that in 2011, more abatements the first year, they dwindle as we go, but appeals get filed beginning in 11 or beginning, in, they will begin in 16. and it may take multiple years before most of them get heard, and they may all be scheduled for the same year. So that's the reason why we asked for the increase in that line item. Um, other than that, uh, no, nothing really changed that much. Uh, regular wages uh, only increased by 1.7% as we uh, hired a new clerk this year, which reduced the, uh, the part-time wages. Um, and there was a slight increase in motor vehicle allowances. We have two... Uh, field people uh, working now in conjunction with the reval as well as the increase in uh, building permits as you heard earlier as well as sale properties that we're visiting uh, that's those sales have increased substantially um, beginning last year and we've we've seen a, even a greater increase this year and they expect that to continue through through next year so do, what do you you go to them after they've been sold yeah, we send a welcome letter um, the questionnaire and also a request to, to do an inspection. We've had a pretty good um, response to those letters. We're running higher than most tip towns do typically do. We're probably in the 40 percent range of getting responses or requests to come and do interior inspections. But we also go to every sale to remeasure every sale. So we do visit every sale. We may not get into every one, but we do visit every sale. And this year we're uh, approaching 400 qualified sales in one year. Wow. Um, that doesn't count the incomplete construction, which we would consider unqualified for this year. It will become qualified next April 1st when we reassess the property at 100% if it's complete, of course. So we're looking currently at having um, over 1,000 sales available to us for the completion of the revaluation. We currently have 700 qualified sales um, as of September 24th. Um, we also have over 100 um, sales that represent incomplete construction as to the new condominiums, uh, Hilliard Ave, uh, homes there. Um, so as of next April, now that they have been completed, those will become qualified sales for the purpose of the revaluation. So that's that. That's the reason for the for the excessive field work that we're doing currently. Now, what happened about the you had a the land um, commission uh, had a someone appealing about the value of the property for a purchase? Yes. Yeah, we've had two 
requests for purchase this year both went to the lease land commission mm -hmm. um, the most recent one was heard I believe a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago yeah. so what happens after they go to the commission they're given they're, the commission determines the price that they can purchase it and gives and gives them typically 60 days to complete that purchase mm -hmm. um, if they don't complete it within 60 days it has to start over I believe um, I so we that's haven't, the final line yeah. what, what they decide yep. yeah they, they, they set a, uh, a time period typically similar to a mortgage be a 60 day or a sale 60 day mm -hmm. um, turnaround for the for the closing for the purchase Mm -hmm. So we, you know, that started. We, we'll see if that um, takes place. Okay, great. Questions, Mr. Waddell? Yeah, um, I can see the, the the increase in the contract with service, and I can see I can see the the reasoning behind it also. That we're just not sure. Yeah. Yeah, you just you just need it. How is the reval going? Um, it's it's going well. Do we have the contract uh, contractor out there doing our that we hired to to do um, the cyclical work? That's going well. Um, we're hoping to um, within a month or so be within the center of town between Winnicott and, and um, High Street, doing an area that probably hasn't been done in many years. Um, we're hoping that by this time next year we've pretty much visited. You know, 99 percent of the properties. Hopefully, 100 percent. But we we will we'll be close to that mm -hmm. as of next uh, next fall. And, and when will people start seeing that for the public's? You know, um, notice it. Well, they'll what they'll see now is is our attempt to uh, measure and list the properties, uh, sale wise or cyclical wise. Um, Vision's presence will be more of a review process that I will be involved in which where we will um, visit each property from the from the rights of way and um, regrade everything or build new tables develop new land values um, notices are right now preliminary notices are expected to go out of course we're a long ways away from that but probably June or July of next next year yeah. uh, hearings will be in the July August time frame I think that's what we did in 2011 hopefully have values set um, in early September in conjunction with the MS-1. If we can make the MS-1 on September 1st, that would be great. Typically, it, it's delayed a little bit because of all the uh, changing of values and correcting a lot of um, from hearings and things like that. Final, you know, getting it finalized, it may take, you know, into end of September, early October maybe. But by then we should, we'll see the values. Notices will be sent out indicating their final values um, and those will be implemented as part of the second tax bill in 2016. The first tax bill will still represent current uh, data, current current uh, uh, values other than changes we make from our visits. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridal. All set. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, nice, nice job, Ed, and you've got a big uh, <laughs> Still, a big job ahead of you. Um, when your when the reval is complete, will vision appraisal be updated as to say photographs of homes and whatever? Because right now there's a lot that on vision appraisal it doesn't have a picture of the property. Well, yeah, the new the newer stuff we're taking pictures as we visit it. Like Hilliard Ave, let's say we haven't been out there yet to mm -hmm. pick up the new homes. Right. They won't be picked up until next April first for right. valuation purposes. Mm -hmm. But we do have an appointment with one of those for a sale visit, I believe, on Friday. Mm. And what we're going to be doing is measuring and taking pictures of all those properties and others. And the sales so far, are they, because for a while there we were seeing the properties selling for higher than the current assessed value. Is that still continuing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much You're for welcome. what you do. No questions. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. And... So roughly, uh, what do you feel it has been the appreciation over the last year for the average house in Hampton? Well, I mean, our, our equalization ratio for 14 um, dropped about 7 to 8% from the prior year. We currently have dropped another 2 to 3%. We're into the about 88% on an average assessment to sale ratio. Mm -hmm. However, 
I mean, get into specifics, but we have it areas where we're seeing 30 to 40 percent uh, increase in values over current assessments. Um, so there are there are areas that are seeing substantial gains compared to other areas throughout the town, mostly waterfront or pro uh, neighborhoods in close proximity to the water. Yeah. So it varies um, throughout the town. Yeah. Um, but on average, it's a, we're at about. So, are there any areas that are going down? Um, not really. Not neighborhoods in a whole. I mean, we're gonna, we see sales still that are that are over the assessed value, but they're not indicating that the entire neighborhood uh, should go down. There's there's reasons for that based on condition of the property or changes that have taken place during the year that we haven't picked up yet. Um, condominiums, uh, you saw we see a variation in condominiums. With the amount of condominiums and the amount of new condominiums, older, older ones sometimes see a decrease or stagnant values because of all the new ones being sold. Mm -hmm. The market, you know, doesn't seem to, uh, those don't seem to sell as fast. They seem to stay on the market a lot longer because is, you know, so many new ones are being presented to the market and sold. Wow. Now, when they do have that lease land, um, you know, when the lease land committee, mo you know, meets, mm -hmm. what happens if the people aren't happy with the amount? Do they have an appeal process, or is that just the final? Well, that that is the process. They we that, that is we present our side. Process. They present their side. The commission makes the final determination. And so that is the final. Right. Just I like to know how exactly how that works. But I appreciate it. Thank okay. you for coming in Thank tonight. You. Appreciate it. Oh, do, uh, Mr. Bean. No, we're good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, I'll, Ed. I'll help you. Don't worry, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Um, moving on to the tax collector. How are you tonight, Donna? Good. How are you? Page Fine. six. You. Page six. Ooh, that sounds like the gossip page in the newspaper. Right it is. Right there. Okay. I love juicy stories. I have a fairly small budget, but a lot of paper. <laughs> So um, I assume you've all gotten a little presentation that I prepared with my budget. I'm not going to go through that. I don't think uh, mm -hmm. I need to revisit that. Um, overall, my budget is has a 2% increase. I have five line items in my budget with a, a few sublines in there. Um, all the changes that I've made except for wages is based on spending history of the past few years. So um, my overall budget total for 2016 is 102,573. And I'll just go through the five line items real quick. Number one, supplies is down $1,531. Uh, number two, staff development down $445. And this still leaves money for us to to do our, you know, our um, conferences and that kind of thing. Um, number three, tax liens is down $300. This line is fully reimbursed. When the first lien payment comes in, we take those, those costs first before we take any interest or principal on a lien payment. And number four, <clears throat> excuse me, part-time wages are overall it actually shouldn't be part-time wages because there is a full-time deputy in there that so that that title needs to change but overall the entire line is down 266 dollars this includes a step increase of nine cents per hour for my deputy which is a contractual increase and um, i've lowered the estimate amount of hours for our part-time clerk so we have a two-person office, myself and my deputy are both full-time, and we do pull in a part-time clerk for a few hours during tax time, if we need it, if we feel we need it. There have been a few years that we haven't pulled that person in. Um, and then probably the most controversial line item here will be the elected official wages. I have included the 9% increase for the raise that was recommended by the town manager last year which we did not or I did not get because the of the default budget. So um, I know you pretty much aren't interested in discussing the elected official wages. 
Um, just but for public information, I want to just explain that the town clerk and tax collector positions are unique in that we are elected officials and department heads. Our raises don't fall under department head raises, they don't fall under union, and they don't fall under non-union. So we're our own little separate group. Um, the only way we can get a raise is to add it to our budget and have that budget pass along with passing through the committees or to put it into a warrant article and have that pass. And because of this, our raises are few and far between. Um, just for an example, I have worked for the town for eight years and I'm on my third term as tax collector and I've had one raise in that eight year period. It was a 3% raise. Um, it was a few years ago. So they really are few and far between and um, you know if I understand why I can't be included in the department head raises and we were or I can't speak for Jane but I would have been happy to have gone along with the one and a half that they get you know that but we understand why we're not included in that so yeah this was a problem for your predecessor right yeah Went on for years right and everybody always appreciated her but right. sometimes people just don't understand right Right. So I know the 9% seems like that's a huge greedy amount and it's just because it, we we go so few and far between it's um it's kind of like a catch up for us. So that's why it's in there. Okay, great. Questions, Mr. Bridal. Now, I know once you, it'd be nice once you get caught up is to be able to have a small to put the small increase increase and I think right. that might go, but like you said it it's it's been few and far between yeah and even that small increase may not pass and then that kind of starts kind right. of rolling too so. it, you know you look at the amount of money that goes through your office mm -hmm. for this town and what you do and uh, I'm sure there are, are very few tax collectors that have the responsibility of the volume that you do we have a pretty high volume that uh, aren't aren't paid what you are. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're paid a lot more yeah. if we uh, if we did a, uh, <clears throat> a grade scale of throughout the county of, of what they were. And it's hard it's hard for this particular position because a lot of towns they're combined. Mm -hmm. Other towns the town manager is the tax collector so it's hard to get Correct. A, a wage salary you know Correct. that's that, that's comparable for our size but our office runs pretty much about as soon as those bills go out, about a month after that, we're about 92% collected on those bills. And the rest we work with, uh, partial payment, a lot of partial payments, a lot of people coming in, 50, 100 bucks a week. So, and that, that, that has increased quite a bit. Well, I know both you and your, your, your deputy do an excellent job there. And I've, I've overheard some of the conversations and some of the struggles that people have had yes. that, that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think you guys do it gracefully. I think you uh, you have the uh, the property owners uh, and the voters and the uh, people of Hampton at, at best at heart. Thank you. Uh, your office does an excellent job of that, and uh, I hope you continue to do that. Thank you. I, I consider myself, I'm not expert in a lot of things, but I consider myself to be an expert in customer service. There you go. <laughs> so. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Thank you. Uh, great job. I don't have any problem with your budget. Donna. Mr. Dean. Great job, and thank you. Thanks. And Mr. Wardell. Super, and I hope that uh, the raise goes through. I hope so, too. Job. Thank and you. And it was last year that we added the, the full time for the deputy? Yes. And that's yeah. worked out? Mm -hmm. That's worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very good. That's good. That's good. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And can I just say on a personal note mm -hmm. that um, tomorrow is the two-year anniversary of our kidney transplant between my son and I, oh. and we're all doing healthy, oh, thank good. God. Good. So uh, Congratulations. we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, That's thank you. Super. Thank you. Yeah. I can't believe it's been two, two years. years. Wow. It's a wonderful wow. story. Any other questions? No. Have so a nice you. evening. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Moving on to the town clerk she will be with us monday night mr chairman she oh, was at okay. a family unfortunately a family funeral uh, ah. this evening so she could not be with us and she will be with us on monday night okay moving on to the planning department and the planning board and that is page number 10. Mm. 
Good evening. Good evening. Seeing you two nights in a row. I know. It's a shock. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to talk with you. It was pretty busy night. at the end of that last meeting. Yeah. A lot of people talking. It was yeah. a good meeting, though. It was interesting, yeah. It really was. Ladies and, and good gentlemen. Evening. Good evening. Jason. Okay, so you have our planning uh, board what budget in front of you. Page 10. 10. Page 10. Okay. okay. And uh, very uh, minor changes compared to last year's budget. Um, you'll note the differences um, with the regular wages. Um, we do propo have proposed with discussions with the planning board a 1.5% merit increase for those discussions for um, both Lori and myself. Um, we also have added under uh, replacement equipment $1,000, but that's for the maintenance contract extension for our Canon printer and also the print head, which was expected to be due during 2016. So we need to add that for the purposes of maintenance of that machine. Um, other than that, um, it's the same budget as last year, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has with regard to it. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's right there. It's, it's great. You guys do a great job. I mean, sitting on the planning board, as the representative, you know, I see you come in every week with your memo and what's going on, and you keep everybody up to date, and it's just uh, really well done and very efficient. So, yeah, I have no problem with your budget. Mr. Bridal. No, I think uh, they are doing a good job. Uh, Jason, you, you've brought uh, a lot of experience, um, a lot of professionalism to that department. Mm -hmm. um, I like the... Uh, the, the planning meetings you do before now mm -hmm. with the uh, with with the pro with the property owners yeah and the department heads and oh, I think that that creates a lot of goodwill so that when they come into the the planning board they're a lot better pr uh, uh, planned and right. a lot better uh, chance and smooth it going through and I think that helps them out a lot and I think yep. you had a lot to do with that if I'm not mistaken well, thank and you very much. And, and we're working to continue to even improve that further. You know, and, there's always, you know. And so, so uh, again, it's, uh, as, as we heard it with the uh, tax collector, it's the customer service. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've heard it from other departments. It's the customer service that, that people want and they're getting. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what I'm hearing on the streets. I'm hearing uh, that they, they like the service they're getting and they appreciate that. So continue to do good work. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Jason has done a remarkable job in that planning office, absolutely remarkable job. And I know uh, Chairman McNamara is pleased with the board, working hard. And uh, Revenue, Brendan, rough estimate because you guys bring in revenue just like zoning. We do. That's the other part of the picture here. Right, yeah, I don't have a specific number in front of me, but, I, but what I can Ball tell park. you... Hard I'll to say. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, what I was going to add, though, is that this year we did... Uh, fee increases, our application fees, we did increase them, so that's going to improve Good. upon that. Um, I like fee increases. You know, yeah. I don't, you know, ballpark number, it's... Well, if it's you hard. think of it, just... But, I, but I, can, I can look into it, I can get Give you Give a call number. to the town office and then we'll know next Monday, but it you should, do generate revenue. From and it should be noted activities. that um, the, the fees that we do charge are, are there to offset the cost of running the planning department right. and when somebody right. goes to the registry of deeds or or when we send out a butter notices etc different things those fees cover those costs so it's it's a it's kind of a, a in order to run the department effectively and not cost the taxpayers any right. money when somebody's building something or changing something that's what the fees are really for right yes that works very well and we are honored to have the chairman on site walks anytime he chooses. Thank you so much, <laughs> Madam, Mrs. Wolseley. Mr. Bean. Great job, gentlemen. Appreciate you having you on board. Keep it up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for um, coming in tonight. Did you have any other questions? No. 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 Mr. Bridal was talking out of school. <laughs> As a teacher, no spitball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, Thank you. for coming in this evening. Thank you very much. And 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 right. How long have you been here now? It's been year. just over a year now. It was a, year, a year on the 22nd of this well, month. Congratulations, yeah. and it's really been a remarkable uh, oh, transition. Yes. Thank oh, you very yes. much. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. And we have... I'm the only one left. Yeah, Aww. come on, our California girl. And hopefully we can get through all of the ones that are left faster than we just did all those. Hmm. I'm sure you've got all the right answers. 
<laughs> I hope so. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with the budget four. committee. No. Is it? They're no. on the agenda, but oh, I don't think they had any changes. Not that I was notified. Page one, there budget. weren't any changes. Okay. <clears throat> Same with the trustees on page two. Okay. Yeah, the trustees did re um, email me back and say that their budget would be the put same. forward as a statement that it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a right to bring their budget straight to the budget committee anyway. It's not our problem. <coughs> okay. And page four. Page four. Page four. Is that where you're on? I'm getting there. It says finance department. I don't think I had anything really exciting in mind nope. um, for the finance department. I think overall, let's see, what do we have here? Um, a 0.49 percent increase, wage, mostly wa wage related. Um, some of the lines have gone up, some have gone down. It's just a matter of me kind of reorganizing money. You can see this year. There was a lot more detail um, provided yeah. with your budgets, so we're trying to put everything into the line item where it belongs. Good. Um, so I don't know if you guys have questions. Okay. Mr. Bridal. I don't have a comment. Is a, is a budget book this year is done very well. Uh, this, it, it appears that there seems to be a lot more information. Good. Uh, yep. The way it's laid out. Uh, I think it will be easier once the budget committee gets to it to be able to understand it. I think, I, I think some of their questions will be answered once they look at it. Uh, the, the questions are already there. I think um, it's going to be a, a lot easier to explain. And, and even just Joe Public looking at it can, can look at it a lot easier and see where things are at. So. Yeah, and the budget is online, just so everyone knows. Um, it's a working document. It just changed tonight as I was running around uh, the library. The library director has been out sick, as you heard, so she hadn't got a chance to review, and I there was an error in the numbers of like $300. So it's already changed, but it is online, just so the public knows under um, finance where the documents are, where my monthly financials are posted. Also, um, in the details section of the budget, if any line increased or decreased, Fred um, and I both asked every department head to give us a reason as to why, yeah. and that is noted right there in bold mm -hmm. um, at the end of each line item that there was a change, so that hopefully that could answer a lot of um, mm -hmm. the questions before they need to be asked because the answers are right there for everybody. And I think to that's going to I think that's going to help out a lot, and I know it it wasn't a small undertaking for you to get that mm -hmm. changed and, and put in and. Yeah. Uh, I re really appreciate the, the work you've put into this. I think it's going to... Uh, and my proofers. As my, we, in my office. Your proofers, they, yes. My oh. proofers, they've been, they're probably as sick of looking at this as I am. <laughs> well, they are. I'm sure they are. But I think it's going to make it a lot easier for, for the town as we move oh, yeah. forward. So I appreciate all the work you've done. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, same thing here. Big improvement in the presentation. Very easy to... Uh, follow. Very Thank nice you. job. I don't have a problem with the amount. Mr. Bean? Two thumbs up, director. Keep it up. Thank you. Yep. And Mr. Wardell? Christy, great job. And, uh, you know, now it's your budget book. You know, it's always difficult when you come into a new position because yeah. you're taking over from the other person and, right. and you're doing what they did. Right. And now it's your stamp on this and you've done a great job with your stamp and in changing it. So, you know, Expectations every year will now go up, so you got to keep. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christy, I haven't looked online yet, but is the Excel spreadsheet online as well? It's uh, up in the form of a PDF file. Oh, but I but I have people specifically asking for that Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet is many documents all linked together into one. It can't. That's why it's always put up as a PDF because that's the only okay. way that it can go. I'm not very because good it's pulled into from all different documents pulled into. Out. And okay. No, that if, it was, if it was up there as a Excel sheet, somebody could go in and change figures without, and, we, and we, this right. way here you kind of it could be altered. Oh, okay, I didn't know it that. It protects it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. Thank you. Audit. Now, our 
So does are you doing the debt services too, or are we doing the audit? It's right underneath. Um, the audit. I will be coming to you guys next week. That number is down, but um, we did RFPs, and I have the results. Um, but when I was working so hard to get these out, I haven't been able okay. to put it all together. Um, so that number could be changing a little, or it could be staying right about the same there once we uh, once I come forward um, next week with that. For the debt service. But I like the note on no, there too. The I think department. that's helpful. Oh. Mr. Bean. We're good to go. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And did we call on you? Yes, you did. I thought so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, what about the debt services? That's debt services? Okay, that's in the back. That's in the um, that's page 55. Old. Page 55. I have my page number there. Thanks. Good job. Um, debt service, I believe, if I remember correctly, has actually gone down. It has. Yes. Um, and yeah. it has gone down for a couple of reasons. You also have the debt schedule as one of your appendices here. And you will see that um, with the refinancing that took place right at the transition of when Mike was leaving last year and when I, um, I kind of finished up that process, he had started and done all the hard part. I just did the closing. But we had the savings there. Um, and we lost, I think, four or five, I believe bonds came off um, and the payments were reduced there was savings because they were all of the non SRF yeah funding the bonds. Four were discontinued and one had one year which is this year and it's gone and it's already paid yep so and then um, so the savings that's where you're seeing most of the savings and if you look at um, page I have 50, no page 55 five. in my book you have I no do page have 55? the debt service in the end but I don't have page 55 Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it jumps from conservation. You don't have I'm municipal debt? It's in there, I think. Wait a minute. No, Wait I a minute. I'm looking in the wrong. It's behind a green Wait. card. Oh, I got it. I'm in the wrong section. And so Sorry. I have listed out all of the... Um, That's good. This is, this is a similar to what's been done in the past, but all the principal themes and the interest are all listed there. Got it. Got it. So there's a relationship. That's good. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Bridal? All set. Mrs. Wolseley? No. This is cool. Mr. Bean. No. And as a percentage, total debt as a percentage to the. As a percentage of what? <laughs> to the total tax income that we bring in. I mean, where are we sitting percentage wise? Debt to. Am you I asking that question correctly or? No. No, you lost no. me. Yeah. There's about three ways to look at it. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Too many ways to look at it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Christy, I stand corrected. Okay. Mm. We haven't used quite half of our debt availability. Okay, and Correct. our debt, debt asking, yeah, we're not, yeah. is Yeah, what? we're very light. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but we're very light. It's in a long-range cap, yes. and I didn't bring it with me. Okay. Right. Yeah, but we're, we're light compared to a lot of other towns. Yeah, yes. So we're in good condition. We're very light. Very, very light. I believe yeah. our number is very low compared yeah. to mm -hmm. what is allowed. I can get that for you, though, that figure. It's very light, Jim. It's very light. It's in a long range cap. I'll just print it out and okay. give it to him. Okay. And management information services. Page seven. Page oh, seven. Can I have one more question on debt yeah. services? Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. <clears throat> there's, there's no value. I mean, with rates what they are now and stuff, you've just redid everything yes. before Mike left. So there's no value in redoing things. Again. I believe all we have left is SRF. Bonds. Yes. Yeah. Which are usually the S I ref and there's one um, Fire. I don't note. One note, yeah. Which deals with solid waste. Yes. So that's not recoverable in by rewrite. So I think this is the we last year. We rewrote everything that we could rewrite last year. Yeah. yeah. All the S I ref would have to be uh, licensed by the state because they're half contributors into that. So uh, mm -hmm. I think we've we've wiped out just about everything that's not S I ref in the in the, yeah. in the borrowing. Yeah. So. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. And it's all noted on, um, all the SRF ones are noted there, too. So. Okay. And management information services. Yes, that was on page 7, I think Fred said. That's correct. Say 7, yes. Um, let's see. This does have an increase here. Uh, a couple of different lines that were increased. We increased the part-time wages. Um, think about, let's see. I put it more in line with what we were actually using on that line. It's been under budgeted. Mm -hmm. And we also had to include, if you look on your details sheet, once again, there's 
we included two thousand uh, six hundred and seventy dollars there for the additional three elections that we will have in 2016. Uh, yes. um, I had them work up how many hours they usually spend on an election, yeah. or we did kind of did an average over the last couple of years and then took that into consideration so that we could have a basis as to why that line was increasing. Um, the other lines, repairs and maintenance, supplies and expenses, new equipment and replacement equipment, mm -hmm. those lines, once again, we've been trying to get them more into the, where things are being spent from. So the total increase on those three lines is $36,000, but $24,000 of that you will see in supplies and expenses, and it's for the three, 365 Live. Um, that's needed to integrate our email system and to so that we can uh, use the cloud, have use of the cloud. Um, for storage space, so it'll eventually reduce some of the cost in MIS. Um, by having storage space up in the cloud, and it'll help with some of the email problems that some people are faced with. I think people struggle with the town email as opposed to working with like Yahoo and Google and some of those uh, mm. free mail server things. So that's what that's the big item in there. That's the big increase there mm -hmm. so mr bridal no i'm all set thank you this is all set mr bean and mr waddell and the 365 live is that live now is that no been? it's something that the it would like to implement would like to implement yes um i put a little description in there i have some notes here um has to do with the town email and the mail server we've outgrown our 10-year inter-office communication system. The $24,000 would be used to integrate email, outsource our mail server, and which would lower our equipment and storage cost, cost by leveraging the cloud. So it's kind of like the iCloud, but it's for Microsoft and Windows <coughs> and stuff. Uh, so it's needed to be interconnected. Uh, okay. It'll also help for when the times when our email server is down it doesn't happen a lot but fred can tell you that it does happen on occasion and this will allow us so that our, our pcs can um still function when they are not connected to the network for some reason um so that's right, what that twenty four thousand is for and i'm sure going along with that security is being yes well looked at yes paul is very good as, about as that secure as things can be right yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. that's a good yeah. way to put it yeah, he does a very good job at that. Yeah, Paul yeah. and Dylan both do a great job down there. So that's just their recommendations. I have my little yellow cheat sheet here, so I know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> I won't pretend like I know a lot about it because I don't. <laughs> it sounded so. good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Moving on to municipal insurance. Page, Page 12. 12. Oh. Page 12. Okay, as uh, we all know, at this point in the game, we don't have any of our official health insurance rates. They usually come later, I think, right before your final vote, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will have the rates. Um, I just did the standard 7% that we've been using for the last couple years. Um, last year, it actually went down. It was a negative, which we had never seen. Um, so you do see some decreases here because of that. I don't think that we will see a negative again this year. Um, I tried to get some information out of them, but yeah. it's not easy to get. I asked, can you give me a ballpark? No. So just have to do our best guess for right now on that. Questions, Mr. Waddell? Yeah, that's a tough one, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, yeah. we're at the mercy of what the rate comes in at, right? Yeah, correct. And yeah. It's not, it, it, we don't have negotiating with any other, I mean, there's one group that does it or? No, we've gone out to bid on it before. Um, we for health we and currently have stuff. a little bidder last time around, yeah. which was two okay. years ago. Right. So, and, and part of the problem we have is that uh, the current coverages we have, when we're looking at the other bidders, uh, they don't necessarily cover all those coverages. Yeah. For instance, our town attorney, we'd have to go out in the general insurance market if we went to another carrier to, to cover him, mm. which would be extremely expensive. And That's a lot of the health insurance, the majority of the health insurance is governed by 
That's collective union bargaining. contracts yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. um, and retirement did go up July first. So that's also is it going in this section? No, it's in the next. We also carry on our um, liability insurance for motor vehicles for the fire department. Uh, should any of our fire engines or ambulances be destroyed or damaged, they're 100 percent replaceable with new equipment, not 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 a similar type, but brand new equipment. So, so. Mr. Bridal. No, I'm all set. Thank you. This is well set. And I think Mr. Bean is okay. We'll move on to patriotic purposes. I think is Christy done? Because I think. Let me handle this, Mrs. Wolseley. I'm just wondering. Who, what is that, Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the patriotic purposes, which are on page 53, yeah. that's our contribution to putting the flags out for Memorial Day and flowers. Yeah. Uh, the American Legion sets the flags for us for the Boy Scouts, which is a great job because there are a lot of them to put out. So what did, uh, that's on 53? That's on 53. Mm -hmm. It's $1,800. We spend uh, usually that amount plus maybe a little more. Uh, unfortunately, as we have more veterans passing away, uh, yeah. I think uh, the last time I looked at my American Legion magazine, we were losing 175 World War II veterans a day wow. in the country. So that's a lot. Uh, so every time we lose a veteran here in town, we have another flag to purchase and put out twice during the year. So that covers that expense along with flowers that grow as well. Yeah. Okay. Are we finished with um, no, we Christy? Have or? some more. Okay, We're that's good. what I thought. Um, town beautification. That's um, right also on page 53. Uh, that's That, again, is for setting out uh, flowers and, and doing trimming uh, various flower gardens around the town. It's our contribution. Mm -hmm. We have the Garden Club contributing towards that as well as we're doing work, and yeah. the Portsmouth Garden Club also contributes to that. So we have a lot more resources coming in than we're spending. Does anyone have any questions? No, any? just no. on that, I know that uh, Mrs. Wallingford for a number of years has done it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out, outside of the Garden Club, and I know that the, right. uh, uh, she's done an excellent job on, oh, yeah, on these buildings. and. Uh, Experience Hampton, I know it's picked up a number of uh, they have along flowers route and, one. on yeah. Route yeah. One and, and stuff like that too. So it's uh, this is just a small portion of that. Yeah, and it's very. I small. see Betty Moore out when I come home from the gym. It's six thirty in the morning. She's out there working at the little park on Lock Road. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She, she does a great yeah. service. The general government buildings. Page eleven, Mr. Chairman. I'll flip back the page. Um, that pays for this building and any emergencies we may have in other town buildings that aren't covered. Principally, it's this building. Um, the biggest expense there is uh, maintenance. Uh, we have, of course, telephone, yeah. custodial services, which are contractual. Telephone's contractual. The electric, which is contractual, and that rate went up through the roof this year from uh, six cents a kilowatt hour to 15 cents a kilowatt yeah. hour. Heating fuel, again, contractual. That's from our gas supplier. Uh, water is contractual. They're all rates set uh, by the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, the maintenance of the building, we've been averaging more than $20,000 a year on building maintenance. We're up to almost 30. Um, some of that's uh, for, as you can see, is for uh, contractual obligations like the elevator. Uh, HVAC maintenance contract. Otis has a contract. They're in here four times a year. The state's in here every other month on the elevator. So we pay for that service as well. Mm. Uh, we have a landscape person that comes in and does all the, the cutting and, uh, and, and trimming and all those other things. The boiler inspection contract we have, um, there it's just an unending <laughs> Uh, litany of things. The building's getting older, and every year we're required to replace more and more. Mm. We have been replacing carpet uh, on a regular basis annually because the carpet is, is, has become frayed. All of the yeah. um, general public areas have been replaced now uh, because they were so badly frayed. Some of the offices are going to be started this coming year. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Waddell? Nope. 
This is Wolves Lake. It was an old building when the town moved into it. Yes. So. And so probably not terribly well constructed. And maintained. Yeah. Yeah, when I was with uh, Senator Preston the other day, he gave me all of the background of that. The goodies? It was very interesting. I'm sure, yeah. I've yeah. heard some of the stories, but I haven't heard them all. Yeah, he was, he's was. he got a lot of stuff to share. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wellesley? No. Mr. Bean? No, sir. And Mr. Bridal? Yes, sir. Okay. Personnel administration. Page That's nine. where I was at. Uh, Page 9. Here. Yeah. That's where you will see um, a 2.6% increase overall. And I would say the majority of that is probably from retirement. Um, it's all wage driven, but the retirement rates did go up as of July 1st. Yeah. I think it went up to 11. Yeah. I have it right here. It went up to 11.17 for uh, Group 1 employees, yeah. mm -hmm. 26.38 for police, and 29.16 for fire. So I think that 2.6 is pretty much um, all related to yeah. increases uh, for the retirement rates. And not a crumb of a contribution from the state. Any questions, Mr. Waddell? Yeah, on the employee separation costs. Yes. That's adding money to, or that's? Uh, that came in, I, I didn't change that amount. I did analyze it, though. I um, asked all of the departments who we basically look at who's eligible to retire, and I have a whole spreadsheet. Um, whoever's eligible, we put in their balances. We predict what they're going to accrue, what they'll get January 1, and then I, I go to the department head and say, what do you believe the likelihood yeah. of said individual is of retiring? And we do 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent. And so that's kind of how, and I think I may have come up a little shy of that number, but... Mm. I left it at that because you never know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but I was very close to it because if I hadn't come up close, I would have uh, yeah. adjusted it. But um, I think the retirements have kind of settled down for the moment. No, I would. No, I don't. There's think quite a true. few next year. Yeah, oh, there yeah. are a number. Yeah, there was. There's a lot that were eligible. I think. Let's see. We have one. Two, yes. Oh. Yeah, I have a good 15 people who are eligible. Oh, good. Grief. According to. I thought um, the last wave oh was. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. That's why There's another asked, wave that's coming. And I have five people at 100%. Wow. Yeah. And that and so. that would? That would cover them, yeah. Cover them? Yeah. And, and the sick, sick leave buyback program, that's? Yep. That should be good, too. Mm. Last year, that one did come in a little bit. Uh, that one came in at 145. I expect it to go right back up next year, though, because I think a lot of that last year had to do with the police and fire chief uh, changing of the guard, so to speak. Uh, um, but now they'll play at different levels than they were eligible to play at before. Um, and this number didn't include the police or the fire chief. So I think that's why it's low this year for 15. Okay. If there are funds left in those two accounts at the end of the year, we're going to ask the selectmen to transfer them to the, uh, uh, the reserve account for the compensated, compensated absences so that we can write down some of our outstanding debt in that area. Good. Questions, Mr. Bridal? No, just uh, uh, one thing to look at is, I, I, you know, I've heard people when they see this sometimes, they see that the police and fire is much more than, than the other town employees for the contributions. But what a lot of people don't realize is that we don't pay Social Security on police and fire. Right. So you take 6.2 right off of that. Right. Yeah. right, right. So that brings it down a lot. And, and, and some people don't n understand that because right. they're not entitled Good to point. Social Security. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mrs. Wills -like. makes a big difference. Yeah, I have a problem. Mr. Bean? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, and not tonight, but on that uh, uncompensated uh, uh, fund balance, I'd, I'd like to uh, do some more forensics, and I don't like the thumbnail or Kentucky windage. I personally don't like that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's been uh, uh, mentioned in audit. I may be wrong, but it has uh, come up to the attention of the auditors, and I think we need to be... And this is just my opinion, more professional grade and, and uh, work towards funding that. I don't think it's fair to uh, uh, Christy to always monitor that. I think it takes away time from other issues and uh, uh, professional grade would be fund that fully. So if we do have five uh, senior employees suddenly leave, mm -hmm. um, we have it there and it doesn't create a budget crisis, especially this year when we're as tight as we are. And we do have uh, many long tenured uh, dedicated employees that quite frankly look like me and they may be leaving soon so 
um, I, I think we should put that uh, on the front burner for a little more attention, whether it be a warrant or however it works. Actually, there is a warrant article that addresses part of that problem. Thank you, sir. Okay. You mentioned that under GASB, I think. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, hydrants. Hydrants. Yeah, those, hydrants those things that cost us money. They are what they are. Fire. I think they came in a little Page lower. 34. Yeah. 34. Um, it it's is what it is. Four hundred ninety-four thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars. Yeah, uh, and that represents just a small increase. Um, that increase is kind of a, there was a decrease last year, and that decrease is is going to continue to go on. I think for some period of time. Yeah. Uh, the problem I have with that is that um, it's a temporary postponement of the rate increases that are being approved every year. They're receiving money back from the federal government uh, because of some filing that, in fact, gives them some extended depreciation, and those mm -hmm. monies have to come back. Mm -hmm. So they're using that money to postpone the rate increases to the town for mm -hmm. hydrant fees and other good. fees. Well, not good because no. it's a postponement. Right. So what's going to happen is instead of getting a 2.5% uh, hydrant or added to the hydrant fee, mm -hmm. you're going to end up with two and a half percent, 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 and it's all going to come in one year. Mm. And that goes for all the all the people in town who have hydrant or have uh, water service. Mm. The same thing's going to apply. Mm. So you're going to get a big jump all of a sudden, and then probably on top of that, there will be a rate increase filing okay. of less than ten percent, but there'll still be an increase. Any questions, Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Bridal. The hydrants all by me don't cost us anything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They're free. Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, keeping in mind that the water to suppress fires is unmetered. Yep. Mr. B. Negative, sir. Thank you. And well, they, they have an obligation to, under PUC regulation to keep it unmetered. Yeah. Well, right. I would hope so. Yeah, they yeah. do. Town manager. Uh, this is the Selectman Town Manager's accounts, and, and uh, they're on page number one by some stranger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's appropriate. Um, this took a lot of work. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot involved. Uh, Selectman, uh, that's, that's flat funded um, for the wages. Uh, <coughs> expenses and, and supplies, we've been overspending that now for a number of years. So what we did is we put in the actual amount, $1,300 a year, mm. um, as opposed to continuing to pass that on to other departments indirectly. The same on the town manager's account. Of course, we now have three wages in that, that line we have had now for this is the second year of that. Um, and to give you some idea, we have um, a book binding, which are, is required in order to, to, to save our records. Um, that's $2,500 a year that we're spending in doing that, and that's not been the budget because we've been defaulting. Yeah. But we've been spending it anyhow at the board's insistence. And the same with updating the general code, that's $3,500 a year, and that's been coming out of the bottom line. So we actually put those expenses in. Uh, when I looked down, I looked down at the, the expense sheets for um, the administration, and of course we have to pay for the toner that goes in the, the bloody printing machines. Uh, that's six hundred and fifty dollars for the three machines for a year. That yeah. stuff's expensive. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm beginning to think that there's got gold flakes in them because it yeah. uh, it's so, it costs so much money. And then just miscellaneous office supplies and expenses are a thousand dollars, and that's pretty steady. Uh, under staff development, uh, of course, we have another individual, and we're required to provide that development under his contract with the town. Um, OT wages. Um, that's a result of special projects as well as a town for town, the uh, town report and town meeting. Uh, we have to do that, uh, and even if it's not in the budget, and we still have to spend it. So, and in fact, that's another one that's been defaulting. Might as well be realistic. Well, and that's exactly what we said. And we got together with finance, and we said, let's look at those actual costs yeah. and put them in, so we know what they are. And if they pass, they pass. If they don't pass, we're still going to end up spending them, but it'll come out of somebody else's account yep. or the bottom line. We did five-year averages. You can see there's a lot of backup in this book. So we did a lot of five-year averaging mm -hmm. to see what we we're actually spending. Good. And then you see that across the board on a lot of the accounts that have to do that Fred and I uh, put the budget together for. Yeah. 
you know, we looked back at the past five years and what are we spending in these accounts and kind of took that for the average. Mm -hmm. That's sensible. So. Well, we've had, what, five years worth of defaults in a row, I think. Yeah. And uh, when you look at it, you can't, and I, I, I know that there isn't anybody that can afford to run their household on what they paid five years ago to do that because all those costs have increased. I just look at the electric bills. And I, you know, I, I just, I don't understand how that can happen, but that's okay. Um, you can't jump from 6% to 15, 15 cents a kilowatt hour overnight and sure. expect people not to have to cut something someplace or, or realign the budgets. And that's kind of what we did. Other oh. questions for the town manager or the finance director, Mr. Bridal? All set, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Yeah. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. And Mr. Waddell. The only question I have is on the uh, training workshops. Yep. 4500 just seems like a lot of money. Well, it is, but uh, I think we have to realize we're taking someone that uh, it now is an HR person, and uh, we put in enough workshops for him to go to so that he could become fully qualified in that area. Okay. Okay. And... Um, Sir. We are going into another meeting after this about. You can if you'd like. Yes. <laughs> what is what what is the motion for that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman? You're going to uh, move to go into a non-public session in accordance with RSA 91A uh, Roman two uh, number th number th number three to discuss uh, personnel matters. Okay, and that's. Just stop it. Think about it. Is, is it a roll call? Or? Yes, sir, yes. it is. I'll make yeah. that motion. Christy, thank you. I'll second it. Aye. 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 Christy, great job. Thank you, you for really coming in tonight. Thanks, we Christy. really appreciate it. Maxwell thank you for having us. Do you need a butler? In oh, Holy Grail next uh. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, more stuff you should have a little cart. She's got the heavy piles. I have a bag, but I was running very late because I got the budget call from the library right at the end saying, oh, my budget's wrong, and then I had to... Oh, God, love you. Thanks for coming in tonight. All right, cool. Okay, nice. Good night. Hey, kids are constantly in the way. Yeah, I know. I actually, um, are you guys taking a break or something? Because I wanted to ask you about uh, more articles. Yes, do we have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Second. All yes. in favor? 56. Unanimous. Unanimous, thank, thank you. you. So you're not going to